Hey everyone, how y'all doing? Uh, welcome to uh, another episode of Renegades React. I'm Nate, and today we are going to be uh, looking at a death battle, specifically the death battle between Joker versus Giorno, aka Persona versus Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. So, I'm going to be honest, uh, I think Giorno's going to win. I really do. Um, simply because of the fact that, uh, you know, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is just so ridiculous. Persona, Persona is awesome. Don't get me wrong. I love Persona. I love, I love like the concepts. I love the, I love the the stories. I love the characters. I love so much about the Persona games. But I do think that JoJo, the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, is in terms of power scaling much more like a thing than uh than persona but y'all aren't here to see me talk about the death battle y'all are here to watch me react to this and give my two cents so i'm gonna do that and uh hopefully uh we can get some good information on uh, who they think is gonna win and i uh, guess at the end we'll see uh we'll see what we think so uh here we go this is uh Death Battle, Joker versus Giorno. Here we go. This battle is sponsored by Marvel Snap. Fight! Joker versus Giorno. The Phantom Thief of Hearts and JoJo's Golden Gangstar. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Ren Amamiya wasn't prepared for this to happen. When he witnessed an innocent woman being harassed and stepped in, he had no idea her assailant was one of Japan's most prominent politicians. Poor Ren was forced to leave town, lose friends, and transfer to Shujin Academy. There's definitely more fun ways to ruin your life. But his run-ins with corrupt authority figures was only just beginning. One might call it a theme. And it wouldn't just be dealing with your garden variety scumbag gym teachers. Ren and his new friends found themselves in a whole new world. The Metaverse! Oh, no. scary. Yeah, that one. Derived from the works of Carl Jung, this collective unconscious is like an alternate reality formed from the amalgamated thoughts and feelings of mankind. What humans believe, or even what they fear, directly shapes it. And inside this crazy mental realm, those who have been corrupted by power and abuse the weak have become evil superpowers, just like how they're viewed by many of their victims in the real world. Victims like Ren and his friends, Ryuji, An, Makoto, Pancakes, and the animal. They may have been helpless against crushing institutional might in the real world, but in the metaverse, they had a way to fight back. Personas. As part of the summoner's inner self, personas can become incredibly powerful spirits. By using their personas to battle their foes in the metaverse and steal their hearts, the source of their moral corruption, Ren and company could cause such foes to repent in the real world. So the friends formed a band called the Phantom Thieves, with Ren as their leader, codenamed Joker. And Joker's first persona was the awesome Arsene. With razor sharp claws and the ability to curse enemies with dark energy, Arsene was an excellent persona to start with. But Joker's a wild card. Literally, he can capture as many personas as he wants. He's gotta catch them all because they each have their own crazy powers. From shooting fire, ice, and lightning, to dishing out status effects, healing, and resistances, to lobbing actual nukes at the baddies. So Joker can fight with manifestations of deity like Beelzebub, Odin, and Jesus Christ. Wow, he looks way different than in the paintings I've seen. Oh my God. Oh, hey, did you know that a persona is connected to their user's own stamina? So when a persona is shattered, even though it's not like dead dead, it does rattle the user pretty badly. Well, without his personas, Joker can still rely on his guns, grappling hooks, smoke bombs, etc. Might not sound like much compared to summoning actual Satan, but in the metaverse, perception is reality. No, really, it actually works like that. In yeah. the real world, Joker's gun is only a prop. However, with Joker's reputation in the metaverse, this prop becomes a god killer. As the Phantom Thieves' reputation increased, so did their power, simply because that's how they were perceived. Kinda like how Personas are empowered by the social links Joker possesses with his friends. Yes, in the world of Persona, hanging out with your buds makes you stronger. Anime! 
game! At their max, social links can bring a wildcard user back from the brink of death, instilling them with willpower greater than the rest of humanity combined. I guess meticulously gardening your friends like a sociopath has its benefits. Hey, Wiz, have a cold one on me. Uh, thanks. Ah, looks like our relationship meter's maxed out. Oh, yeah. Well, guess there's no point to us hanging out anymore. Later, loser, I'm gonna go do untested pharmaceuticals and date my teacher. I think Nick was, uh, I think Nick did that in the game. I think I remember seeing, uh, whenever we, uh, shared an office, I kept looking over and seeing him playing Persona 5, and I was just like, I was like, huh. And he would always be involved with Kawakami, and I'm just like, mm, it's a little weird, but oh well. Oh. Just Wait, did you what? Ahem. Over the course of his adventures yeah, leaving the Phantom true. Thieves, Joker's bonds made him as powerful as the gods he commands. He can dodge Lucifer's Morning Star, which summons an energy beam that travels several light years in seconds, millions of times faster than light. Wow. Or survive a cheeseburger that exploded big enough to eclipse a nebula. Talk about having stomach problems. No wonder Joker can face off against opponents that can reshape all of reality. Like Maruki, who used the metaverse to rewrite all of reality to fit his desires. Or Yaldabaoth, who merged the real world and metaverse together. It was in this battle with Yaldabaoth that Joker upgraded our sin to create Satanile, the biblical angel of vengeance. With a big ass gun? Perceive this reality, bitch! Its primary attack, Sinful Shell, is imbued with what is known as Almighty Energy, which can bypass any defense, even that from the Omnipotent Orb, which can explicitly rewrite reality. Yeah. Damn. That's very good. Big ass gun whiz! And with a shot heard around the world, Joker and his friends prove that you're never too young to change society for the better, no matter how arduous the forces against you may be. If the man is keeping you down, just call up the Phantom Thieves to put them in their place. They'll never see it coming. As far back as he could remember, Giorno Giovanna always wanted to be a gangster. Cause damn it feels good to be a gangster! Gone are the days of leaving horse heads in your enemy's bed, or squeezing their head in a vice till they pop! Giorno wanted to be a different kind of gangster. A more progressive, metrosexual kind of mob boss. A gang star! A shy, withdrawn boy on the streets of Naples, Giorno's life changed the day he saved a wounded mobster. In return, he was rewarded with future protection from abuse and isolation. This act of reciprocal kindness convinced Giorno of the value of the mob as a social organization. If only it was commanded by the right person. Someone like Giorno, all he had to do was take control of the Neapolitan Mafia, Passione, and their army of superpowered assassins. Ambitious? Maybe. But hey, he's the bastard son of the insane vampire douche lord himself, yep. Brando. Who conceived Giorno while possessing the body of his arch enemy, Joestar. Jonathan Joestar. Yep. This technically makes Giorno both a Brando and a Jojo. Hence the name Jojo. Get it? Well, he didn't just inherit the name, but also the Joestar bloodline's power. Giorno possesses a stand gold experience. Stands are invisible, intangible, punchy ghosts that protect their user and come with incredible superpowers, like stopping time, making fiction into reality, or cooking Italian food! God damn, give me that one! And Giorno's gold experience has perhaps the greatest potential of any stand in the series. With just a touch, it can imbue inanimate objects with golden life energy. Turning them into any plant or animal in an instant and back again. Giorno uses this with maximum creativity, like disguising a gun as a banana so you accidentally blow your own brains out. A gorilla's worst nightmare. Giorno <laughs> is, frankly, a super genius when it comes to gold experience's ability. Like transforming bullets into flesh to heal the very wounds they made, or changing a brick into a snake that can detect body heat and find a hidden enemy, or turning his teeth into a special kind of jellyfish that filters out the toxins in the piss he was drinking. I thought I was the only one who did that. 
Then, should the object huh? Jono gives life to be a part of a greater whole, like turning a tooth into a fly, it will attempt to return to its original source. Not only that, any damage Jorno's creations receive will be reflected onto the opponent. Jorno can even imbue living things with this same energy. This supercharges the target's consciousness, causing them to outpace their physical body and leaving them totally helpless to counterattack. It might seem like you got ten times faster, but you're actually experiencing time at a way slower rate while your body is stuck in the same position. Imagine a Muda to the nuts belt for 20 straight seconds. Forget about it. Especially when you're hitting as hard as Gold Experience. According to the Jojo Veller art book written by the mangaka himself, Gold Experience has a speed rating of A, putting him in the same league as stands like Star Platinum and Silver Chariot, which are faster than light. And although his strength stat is only a C, he can still shatter cars like glass and keep up with A strength stands like Sticky Fingers. Perfect for a merciless stand rush that lasts seven pages long. Daddy Dio must be so proud. With Gold Experience at his side, Giorno joined Passione and rose to challenge its Inclusive leader, Diavolo. Wait, 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 wait. Diavolo? You're telling me that Giorno, the son of God, battles the devil, just like Jesus, whose full biblical name is Yeshua, or Joshua. Ben Joseph, Joshua Joseph, jo Jojo. We're moving on. Diavolo's goal was to get his hands on a stand. <laughs> that is okay. That is a okay. That was some. Hilariously awesome mental math. And when a stand is pierced by a stand arrow, it evolves. So, Joe got it first and transformed Gold Experience into the most broken thing in anime. Gold Experience Requiem. Requiem stands change the rules entirely. It's almost like they elevate your stand beyond the need for combat. Gold Experience Requiem can, in short, negate any action taken against it and return it to a state of zero, shifting reality back to square one. Let's say I woke up this morning, got myself a gun, and fired it at Jorno. With Gold Experience Requiem, no matter how accurate I am, the shot will always miss because I never fired my gun. That is return to zero. And also a horrific example of gun safety. This applies to any attack made against Requiem, including from Diavolo's stand, King Crimson, which can infamously skip time, erasing the universe for 10 seconds. And Requiem negated that. It undid time being erased, while time was already erased, which meant there was no time to unerase the erased time, and I... Uh... Jojo is broken. That's right, Boomstick. Requiem's ability acts independently of time itself. Sound crazy? Well, Requiem can counter the stand made in heaven, which can accelerate time across the whole universe into infinity. So that kind of range of Requiem's ability is actually consistent. It also reduces your willpower to zero, so you can't even fight back. Even your death can be returned to zero. After pummeling Diavolo into pulp, Requiem prevented him from dying, forcing him to relive the experience of being killed over and over in a series of never-ending alternate universes for eternity. Eternity. Just when you thought you were out, Requiem pulls you back in. The second you hear that piano start playing, run. And so, Giorno took control of Passione and turned it into the peacekeeping social organization he always dreamed about. With its streets free of drugs, Italy's youth could rest easy. Their hopes and dreams could be carried into the future on a golden wind. Vento Areo! Whiz! You gotta play that mobile game with all the superheroes and the cool art. Oh, are you talking about Marvel Snap? Yeah, that one, the card collecting game. It's more than that. Marvel Snap is a fast-paced dueling card game, like really fast. Both the cards and the locations you play them in have unique abilities that change the course of a match, making it a real head-to-head -head battle. And it's easy and quick to get into. I was kind of worried I'd have to spend too much time learning different cards and rules, but no, it's actually really intuitive. And look at that 3D art. So cool. There's hundreds of cards and thousands of I get it. I get it. I know why they're doing this. Plus, they just opened they need something the money. all new. The vault with all kinds of exclusive goodies. Sure, but hang on. This guy I'm playing against right now is really tough. That's because it's me, loser. <laughs> oh, shucks. Download the Marvel Snap app now. Available on the App Store, Google Play, and Steam. Or visit marvelsnap.com to learn more.
All right, the combatants are set. We've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle! Jorno <sighs> wins. I I'm, pre I'm predicting it here. If he doesn't, I'm going to be very surprised. I'm going to be very, very, very surprised. Anyway. Gold experience! Go, are set! Giorno Giovanna, your heart is twisted. It is ours to take. Shoki Fantasmi, my dreams aren't yours to take. Persona! He'll never see it coming. took the time to understand my gold experience. All objects given life by gold experience desire to return home. Hey, that actually surprised the hell out of me. Wow. I thought JoJo's was like so broken. Apparently Joker's broken. Damn. Giorno never had the makings of a varsity death battle winner. My this was god. A really fascinating matchup and far from an easy call. Joker versus base gold experience wasn't close though. Sure, Giorno's powers threw Joker for a loop, but Joker and his personas were millions of times faster and could take on universe busters. And there was no doubt Joker could see Giorno stand, considering he could spot similar beings like Shadow. Add in the versatility of Joker's hundreds of personas, and Giorno could get quickly overwhelmed. But that's where Requiem came in, and the game changed. With its ability to nullify any action taken against it, even ones that can affect entire universes, Joker's regular Ooh, arsenal me, was goodness. rendered moot. Remember, Requiem could act independently of time, so Joker wouldn't be able to avoid Requiem's ability. He'd have to beat it outright. Take when the Phantom Thieves faced Maruki. The group couldn't resist the reality warping effects of his powers. He even had an ability that nullified actions against him, similar to Gold Experience Requiem. But Joker still had an ace 
tricks up his sleeve. While Requiem can reduce your willpower to zero, Joker's social links were able to recharge him. And finally, we have Joker's almighty attacks, which could bypass reality warping defenses like the omnipotent orb. The perfect counter for Requiem. And this is actually backed up in JoJo. While Requiem only has one appearance in the manga, it did show up in the game Eyes of Heaven. There, it faced off against the world over heaven, which can overwrite reality to overpower any attack, including Requiem's return to zero. That meant an almighty attack that can bypass reality warping would have the same effect, giving Joker the option he needed to land a killing blow against Requiem's perfect defense. Dio is such a dick, he literally ruined his own son's death battle. Jorna was brilliant, but Joker had the versatility, experience, and almighty power for the final blow. Damn. Jorna missed his golden opportunity and had a shell of a time. <laughs> hey, Wiz. You hear what I said? I said, Jorno missed his golden opportunity and he had a shell of a day. The winner is Joker. Next time on Death Battle. Bowser versus Eggman. Subscribe and join as a member to see more Death Battle. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, that, uh, that genuinely surprised me. I was not expecting it to go that way. I fully expected Giorno to win. I mean, at least, but, well, but then, <sighs> the full extent of Joker's abilities, just, wow. <laughs> what kind of persona is that? What kind of stands are those? Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Guys, Giorno is the fourth JoJo character in the death ba in death battle. Dude was effed from the beginning. Damn, I actually can't believe it. A death in a death battle where power of friendship is actually an account an accountability. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's the crazy thing about it is like you literally, it. Oh man. <clears throat> You need that MF to reflect the physical. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so it seems that the comment section, for the most part, agrees with this. I honestly thought that Giorno would win, but hey, I've been proven wrong, so I guess that's just how it goes. So, yeah, uh, Joker versus Giorno. So, uh, I mean, let us know what y'all think. I personally, I personally thought this was a great death battle. The animation was good. And. Honestly, it's death metal that makes you think, so that's a good thing. So, anyway, I guess we're going to end it here, everyone. Uh, thank you all very much for tuning in, and until next time, I am Nate. I will see you all then. Take care. Peace.